Hi. Last week, I asked if the state, the capitalist system, or any of its organs of rule, like the police, were actually consensual, like we've been told. They are not. They manufacture legitimacy through fear and ignorance, and as we know from sex ed class, that's not consent. I think the fear part of that equation is kind of obvious. You do what they tell you, or else you get punished. But there are a number of institutions they use to legitimize their actions, beyond simple coercion. Legitimacy is in the eye of the beholder. What you consider justifiable, I might not. But more important is what a whole culture considers legitimate. What is one individual opposing an entire culture? They might change people's minds, like in Twelve Angry Men, but usually their voice is lost and their opinion is steamrollered. If the action or policy we're talking about is agreed upon by all parties involved, then there's consent for that action to go forward. And in non-hierarchical societies and non-hierarchical organizations, that's how most things get done. But in a class society, the people at the top impose their will on everyone else, and nothing is voluntary about it. As such, they've, they have to legitimize their actions in other ways. I think I've boiled down how they do that to the essential points. If you want to make anything legitimate, it needs to be in the name of something the culture believes in. Cultural values are very strongly influenced by propaganda. Thanks to propaganda, legitimacy can be made in the name of money, the law, and democracy. Let's start with money. The minute you violate any of these sacrosanct institutions, people will tell you you deserve whatever fate police, judges, prison guards, etc. have in store for you. That's how powerful the idea of legitimacy is. If the school and the media and the government say so, you have to do it or face major consequences. And millions of people unquestioningly agree. Now with money, and we're also talking about debt, property, and ownership, thanks to taxes and the commodification of everything, if you don't own stuff, you have to work for someone who does. And because it's all been paid for with money, it's all legitimate. Someone paid to own huge buildings and rent them out to tenants, or to control huge tracts of land, or to restrict the distribution of food, medicine, clothing, or whatever else? That's money. Well, where did they get that money from? Did they inherit it? Where did their ancestors get it? From owning land and people, maybe? Did they get it by owning a business, not working harder than everyone else, but simply owning? Because nobody gets rich through hard work alone. It's impossible. Maybe through other people's hard work, but not purely one's own. If people weren't lucky enough to have rich parents, they're probably desperate for money, so they do the hard work for you. You just have to have money, and then you have this huge pool of labor to make you more. And yet we never ask if the rich deserve their money. All money acquired by legal means is legitimate. Pretty much anything you do with it is legitimate. It's only when someone considers giving money to the poor that we ask if they deserve it. Money is an invention of the state. As you might have read in David Graeber's Debt the First 5,000 Years, money was started by kings or other rulers to make sure regular people were always in debt. Debt means you owe something, which means you have to work to pay it back. Debt has often been used to enslave people that way. 
If a rich person or big business is a billion dollars in debt and have trouble meeting the terms of the loan, they renegotiate it. If a poor person owes a few thousand dollars on their credit card, the bank could take everything from them. They used to put you in prison or enslave you for not paying your debts. Nowadays, well, they might just bankrupt you, but they've brought debtors' prisons back. In case you didn't know about that. And, of course, a lot of the debt that you owe, uh, supposedly, was taken out in your name by the government. And you owe money because you and your labor are the collateral for their loans. Then there's property. Money and property go hand in hand, of course. If you've taken enough economics, you might have heard fables about a primitive society where some people worked much harder than others and then accumulated wealth and property, and that's why other people had to work for them. Well, that story is bullshit. That is absolutely not the origin of property. If you want to know where property came from, learn about primitive accumulation, or original accumulation. It's not a story of hard work. It's a story of violently appropriating land from people who live there, turning it into commodities, enriching the owners, and subjugating the peasants. That is the origin of feudalism and capitalism, and the inequality that accompanies them. And yet, somewhere along the way, partly thanks to economists, we came to trust that ownership just makes everything legitimate. I legally own this land so I can do anything I want with it, including extracting rent from the people on it, tearing it up to make a factory, polluting it, whatever, as long as I'm the owner. And I can use the money I make on it to buy more land and get more people to work for me. This is where landlords come from. When corporations were invented, there were no there were new places to invest now, see? There was still ownership of land, but now also of buildings, businesses, and productive capital. Thanks to these social institutions, today we have to work for other people on their terms for however little money they offer. This is a relationship of force, not freedom. Not only do money and ownership automatically make actions legitimate with no more questions asked, belief in the legitimacy of money is equally the belief that if you don't have enough money, you shouldn't be allowed to do or have certain things. If you don't have enough money for rent, you're not allowed to live indoors. The belief in property is the belief that it's just fine to exclude people even from empty buildings or land because money made it all legitimate. We assume the right to defend property with violence, which usually means walls, barbed wire, security systems, and police. If you don't have enough money for food, you're not allowed to eat unless someone chooses to help you. We don't consider people's needs. You have the right to defend your property if you have any, but not the right to eat. Legitimacy is whatever is in the interest of people with property. So property is considered inviolable. Then there's democracy. If something's considered democratic, it's legitimate. Somebody once overruled me by saying, Hey, look, see, it's two to one. That's democracy. Well, I still don't agree with the decision, and I never agreed to that method of taking decisions. There were three of us. We could have reached a consensus somehow. But instead, this guy wanted to impose his will on me, so he chose his way. That's a bit like our so-called democracy today. Every time someone in government makes a decision, however unpopular, it's legitimate because it's democracy. And if we don't like their decisions, we're told we vote them out. Well, voting them out doesn't reverse their decisions. In fact, voting them in shouldn't legitimize their decisions. 
money will always rule in politics. As long as there are money and states, they will keep going hand in hand. People like Robert Reich, who talk about reform and getting money out of politics, are naive. After all, there are already various laws against things like bribery. So we don't have bribery anymore. We have campaign contributions. All of a sudden, bribery is something they only do in foreign countries that don't have the rule of law and money becomes the basis of politics once more. Why would you expect politicians and their corporate sponsors, you know, the decision makers, to get money out of politics? It's like expecting you to bulldoze your own house because it's blocking the view from mine. You can bang your head against the wall of reform and accountability and so on your whole life, but little to nothing will change. It's not a malleable system that serves and is accountable to its citizens. It's a system of oppression. They just use the word democracy to fool you. The modern belief that this is what democracy is supposed to look like comes in part from how the media talking heads are always drawing a big line between democracy and dictatorship. Democracy is what happens here. Dictatorship is something in foreign places where they're not as enlightened as we are, or they don't appreciate freedom as much, or they just haven't reached that stage of development, or whatever the argument being made is. We're told democracy is when the people rule, right? But the only thing the people get to do is vote. That's not rule. Rule is making and enforcing laws. Elections make only very minor differences to what laws will get passed and how they'll be enforced. If the people can be persuaded that elections are legitimate, they can be led to believe that winning a vote, however many people voted, regardless of what they know about the person, means the elected person now has power over them. They can now make laws over you. That means the power to spy on you, to criminalize your hobbies, to take your money and use it to repress you, and to trick you into thinking it's all for your own good. That's the job of a democratically elected representative in a nutshell. How could they possibly represent you? They don't know what you want. They haven't even asked you. They could only represent you if you believed everything they do is legitimate because they won an election. But even if not, there are other words they invoke to complicate things and induce you to comply. Academia being a key disseminator of propaganda, in political philosophy you learn about the social contract. Oh. Now, I haven't taken much law, but I think of a contract as something I get to look over and consider whether or not I want to sign it, maybe negotiate. But the social contract is different. Apparently, when we were born, we entered into a contract with the state whereby they would make all the laws and enforce them any way they see fit, monopolize the means of violence, control all the land and force us to work for them, and in return, they defend us from people in other places who would do the same thing. I don't remember signing this contract. I don't remember being shown a contract. I guess they get you to sign it as a newborn. Ah, oh, well, you're off your guard, you see. But don't contracts expire? Don't they become void if one party doesn't live up to it? And yet it's this so-called contract that people use to tell you to obey. Some people often liberals, invoke the social contract to justify their own oppression, while others, usually conservatives, have slightly different justifications. Many assume democracy is meritocracy. First, as a million studies can tell you, meritocracy is largely imaginary. 
Second, even if we did believe in and live in a meritocracy, what exactly justifies the many powers these superior people have over us? Have you ever stopped to ask that question? Ocracy means rule, government, you must obey. Merit means they deserve it. They deserve power over you. They deserve your money. They deserve to make the laws and own the businesses. They deserve all the best land and houses and education and everything else that comes with rule. Well, why the hell would they? Why would anyone deserve power over you? Well, we know why. They have money. And everything done with money is legitimate. They won elections. And everything you do is legitimate if you've won an election. Huh. Of course, people will say not literally everything our rulers do is legitimate. We have laws, after all. As long as something is within the confines of the law, it's legitimate. Conversely, everything that happens outside the law is illegitimate. It's great that the propaganda has wrapped up all moral philosophy so simply for us. We don't even have to think anymore. The only question we need to ask is, is it legal or illegal? Maybe we should break this question down. I've made a video on the law and another on constitutions that I link to in the description, which I suggest watching for a longer discussion. But to keep it simple, the law is force. Laws are made to empower the system to use force against people for whatever reason the laws say. So right there, it's hard for me to see why anyone would just accept them as inherently right. Moreover, laws are written by lobbyists and passed by politicians. These are two groups of people everyone claims to be skeptical of, claims they have too much power, knows they've been bought off. But if they wrote words on paper, all of a sudden their work is legitimate. And if you break one of their sacred commandments, whoa, anything done to you is your fault. In fact, we're so hypnotized by the propaganda, we actually repeat the phrase, ignorance of the law is no excuse, to each other. We tell people they deserve to have their lives ruined because they hadn't memorized millions of lines of statutes. Please learn to question the things we've been taught to say. Don't be a mouthpiece for your oppressors. The laws that get enforced most are the ones passed at the behest of rich and corporate donors. But the ones you hear about most in classrooms and in the discourse are human rights laws. Human rights fulfill the rhetorical purpose of law which is, you know, supposedly to protect our rights and freedoms or something like that. Of course, that's all backwards, since it's very costly and time-consuming to use the courts to get them to uphold these supposedly inalienable rights you have, and while the laws designed to punish you are enforced at a moment's notice. No one ever seems to uphold your right to disobey. I guess that's not a right. Even if they've torn up all your other rights and trampled all over your social contract. I've made a video on rights too, if you want to check it out. Whenever I question the employer-employee hierarchy, or the landlord-tenant hierarchy, people tell me it's legitimate because we signed a contract. They want to talk about the individual. I want to talk about the system, where some people have all the money, so they do the hiring and firing, so they can take the full value of what's produced, and some people have no money, so they have to apply to accept whatever pay and working conditions the people with money stipulate. But they say, all that's irrelevant. The system we live under is irrelevant because you signed a contract. 
In other words, the system is normal and legitimate. So if you signed a contract under it, however little negotiating power you had, however poorly you understood the contract, you have to honor it. Why? Because it's the law? In other words, the threat of punishment. Don't get me wrong, honoring your commitments affects your reputation, so it's not something to take lightly. But maybe we should have some say in the contract? Maybe we need a union. Some people's opinions of what's right and wrong come down entirely to whether something is constitutional or not. This is how the system legitimizes itself. Some people wrote some words on paper, and now you have to do everything they say, as long as they can argue it's within the scope of the words they wrote. If one or a few judges say something is constitutional, it's legitimate. That's all anyone needs to know. Well, if it's constitutional, it must be right. Because, you know, the Constitution is a perfect, sacred document that only speaks truth and morality. Because politicians and judges say so. Because that's where their power comes from. They never break any of this down for you at any point in your life. You know, th this is what I do with my channel, right? All... All these videos are about breaking things down so that they're actually simple, demystifying, getting rid of the nonsense and actually looking at what things really are. And of course they don't break this stuff down for you at any point in your life, because if they did, you would never believe in it. It's so clearly tautological, a child could see through it. The Constitution, or the law, says something is right and wrong, therefore it is. It's the ultimate because we say so. Any other arguments for the system build those assumptions into them, so they usually beg the question. If you ask why enough, you'll see how shaky the intellectual foundation of these institutions actually is. If all those things are legitimate, we shouldn't be surprised you can simply pay enough politicians to start a war. It's legal. The police can't stop you. They'll only arrest you if you're disrupting the war. Because starting wars and throwing people in jail is legal. And trying to stop a war or stop an arrest is illegal. And of course, under international law, there are restrictions on how you can wage war, but let's not miss the point. If we deferred to international law to teach us about right and wrong, they would just find a way to say the law was in self-defense. We have intelligence they were going to use these weapons against innocent people, so we felt we had to invade them. That's what they say every time, and every time the news repeats it uncritically. They only hit those innocent people accidentally. Therefore, no one committed war crimes, so it's all legal. Arguing from a different legal perspective would be to concede that a law can justify a war. And who's supposed to enforce these laws, anyway? You really think anyone wants to set a precedent that more than a few deposed dictators can face consequences? for what amount to the normal workings of the state? There's no need to consider yourself or other people simple-minded fools for believing these things make oppression legitimate. Propaganda is so strong, most people never escape it. That's why I talk about it so much. We should all be recognizing it and exposing it. These social institutions Money, property, elections, constitutions, and so on, are only legitimate because we've been told they're legitimate, and because enough people believe it. If we learn to see through the propaganda, we no longer have to accept it as fact. Then we question more institutions, and they start to break down too. And if we really learn and work together, we won't have to live under the tyranny of other people's systems anymore. And that's what we should work towards.